Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. has more than 20 years experience in the natural food industry, spanning entrepreneurial to executive positions. She has helped shape and scale some of today's most iconic food brands. She is the founder and chief growth officer of Lava. Please welcome Elizabeth Fisher. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with Elizabeth Fisher from Lava. I've, I'm I kind of very, very, very interested about this. I eat yogurt very often. Me and my wife were actually talking about this company because I was like, hey, I'm about to interview this entrepreneur. But before we get into lava, Elizabeth, give us a little background. Who is Elizabeth Fisher? Oh, well, thank you so much, Gabriel. It's, it's wonderful to be asked who is Elizabeth Fisher. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> I think, um, my husband suggested, asked me a similar question uh, a few years ago, and I just, he asked me to describe myself, and I said, I am lighthearted and philosophical. So those two things together, uh, I really do think I am lighthearted and philosophical, and it's kind of held me in good stead, um, but I am uh, a 60 something uh, white woman who has worked my whole life uh, and loved work. I was, um, I had uh, a father who was a a real world-class sales guy in not in the food industry, but uh, just had the gift of sales. And it, there, I do believe there is a gift involved in that. Um, and uh, I come from a family of uh, Penn graduates. Uh, my grandmother was the first woman to graduate from the University of Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. And um, yes, I mean, when they just the first graduating class and she went on to become a poetess. So you've got sort of this transactional sales background with my dad and then a lot of art and culture and literature throughout um, on my mother's side of the family. But I was really not very good at school. Uh, (laughs) You know, I was very bad at math. It uh, and I love it now in a way because (laughs) really the food industry is all about precision and deadlines and multiples and um it's all about the numbers but i just i I just wouldn't didn't have the confidence as a student and i was pretty rebellious and um but i Fast forward to, I I became a a professional actress and dancer uh, in New York and uh, lived as a, uh, supported myself as a a professional uh, actress. And, but I used to listen to the radio. I was a kind of a talk show junkie. And I, one day I heard this physician on the radio talking about fitness and he just finished the New York City Marathon and he played this great music, Tom Waits. And, you know, it was just, but he was talking about nutrition. And I now know that that he was really one of the early functional medicine, sort of regenerative medicine thought leaders. And I was fascinated. Um, so I, I sent him uh, a t- tape. I wanted to help him produce his radio show, a uh, big, uh, powerful radio sh- uh, station in New York City. And he interviewed all these 
opinion leaders, these researchers that had done the original research on vitamin E and uh, even Nobel Prize winners like Julius Axelrod, who won the Nobel Prize for uh, creating Tylenol. He invented Tylenol for the NIH and never got a dime for it. Uh, but was just, I met all these incredible scientists uh, through my journey with what and the man who ended up being my husband because he he uh, uh so i sent uh i tried to get on that radio show to help him produce the show and schedule guests and um he did end up my husband did, uh, at the time my soon to be husband did propose to me on the second date and we've been married for over 35 years <laughs> So that is, you know, very romantic, but it's also <laughs> been um, <laughs> how I got so interested in nutrition and in health and wellness that led, led the um, kind of laid the foundation. Um, I used to give out recipes and one, I remember one of the recipes was early days of um Remember the oat craze? We, we, I know there was a second oat craze recently, but this was the first one. Um, and I used to give out oatmeal muffin recipes. And everybody encouraged me to bring it to market. So I did that. And um, that was really my first taste of the food industry. It was called Muffin a Day, the Total Health Muffin. It had all the fiber that you need in one muffin. And um, I brought it to a couple thousand grocery stores. And But I was making the muffins, like literally <laughs> sweating over the mixing bowl. Um, and, but I learned so much in, about the food industry. And it bit me good. You know, at just how it works, the mechanics of margin and how you get a price point and how you drive sales and how you just go through the system, how how the system makes money, essentially. So um, and I, I made a lot of mistakes and uh, vacuumed out a lot of donut cases and um, did a lot of work. But I, I, I love it. So fast forward to, um, well, you're, you, you ask me if you would like to ask me another question. That's how I got in the food business. No, no, keep going. I would love to, I, you know, I, I would love to hear kind of how that now transpired into lava and then how that concept was created. Okay. So, um, here I have the muffin. I sold that company uh, and um, I started working with an organic bread company, a flat, beautiful flourless organic bread company called Alvarado Street Bakery. Uh, it is in most natural food stores and most grocery stores across the country. And um, beautiful, beautiful product, unique product. So, uh, that was the beginning of me seeing how powerful a differentiated item can be. And, um, and everybody laughed at me when I first presented that product, you know, <laughs> it's got a five day shelf life and it's really expensive, but uh, we were able to build a tremendous loyal following and, People, it's a very intimate thing when somebody finds a food product that makes them feel good when they eat it, but also just makes them feel good about themselves in a way. So um, that was a wonderful journey. And uh, I also built a number of other better for you brands, including Pirate's Booty. I sold that uh, for the first 25 million. And Salty Snacks is a very high velocity uh, category. S exciting, beyond belief to get multiple, multiple truckload orders, you know, just big dollar POs, all 
illustrating we have something that people want. And it's an incredible thing, you know, to see a warehouse full of cases that are going somewhere, you know, commerce. And I love it. So, um, and that, I still love it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, then I, um, I had a, just a, uh, I had a personal diagnosis uh, at 55 of a ovarian cancer. It was picked up just very uh, arbitrarily. And um, I'd never been sick ever. And then I was all of a sudden in, in a very big system that uh, with, a, with a very poor prognosis. And um, I had, I did have incredible medical care. Uh, was in New York City and the best of the best. And um, I, so I got better. And then about 18 months later, it came back again. And that was um, when my husband said, we're going to change your diet. There's a lot of good science around uh, cancer as a metabolic disease and not a genetic one. And I had a very complex carbohydrate diet, lots of good carbs um, and vegetables and, and plant-based, but I was sort of a typical fat phobic female of my generation, very scale focused, very body weight focused. So put the salad dressing on the side. So I avoided fat pretty pretty carefully. And then, um, so to be making energy from fat requires about 80% of your calories from fat. It's not just reducing the carbs. So it was a very difficult transition for me to make. And, but I felt my life depended on it. So uh, I did it. And I was eating a lot of uh, avocado and coconut and then and macadamia nuts, just tons of macadamia nuts. And I just, I couldn't eat another one. It has a very specific taste. Um, and that's when I found the Peely nut, which I'm showing you, is uh, a beautiful heirloom nut that I'd never heard of and nobody has, but it it grows in the wild all over Southeast Asia, into Australia and Hawaii. And its nutritional composition is similar to butter fat, only it's from a plant. It's very, very high uh, plant fat. And I can talk about that in a minute because it's the best kind of fats. Um, but it has this neutral, creamy, buttery taste, and it performs like creme fraiche. So I could mix it in a mixing bowl, and it would hold a peak, and uh, it it's made a spoonable white mass, which is what we call yogurt. And uh, that was the beginning prototype. Just a little coconut milk and peely nut cream, boom. And uh, I'm not going to say that that's what healed me, but certainly the idea of bringing something to revealing this beautiful ingredient it, that was already perfect, that idea was just so um, spectacular and splendid that it really did keep me uh, excited about going through my treatment and journey and I did get better and I never thought I would and I did and uh, my two friends encouraged me to bring this to market and that's how I did it that's that's Quite incredible. I think, uh, one, I have so many questions. <laughs> I have so many questions. <laughs> Let's start from the beginning. You're, you're talking about, uh, we're going to kind of go backwards in regards to the content you created, because I do want to kind of get all the way back to how you did scale Pirate Booty and sell that. But first, I want to talk about this nut. 
How did you find this nut that, you know, you mentioned it, I've never heard of it. You know, I, I, I'm, I feel like I do kind of eat uh, quite a array of different products, but I've never heard of this um, product. How did you find it and how do you, how do you source it? Well, it was available on nuts.com. I obviously don't so eat enough nuts. So you could just nuts. order it online. <laughs> you know, I was looking for what nuts had the highest fat content. And actually, almonds are pretty high in carbohydrate. So, uh, I mean, they do have fat, but they also had carbohydrates. So when you're restricting your carbs that much, they all matter, you know. Um, and I was trying to get, it doesn't work unless you get enough fat. So, um, meaning you can't make energy from fat. So that's how I found it. And um, I mean, there's a reason it's not available. It wasn't widely known in the US. You know, we spent two and a half years on covering the supply chain, which meant multiple trips to Southeast Asia, working with growers and contractors and aggregators and, you know, navigating price and logistics and most importantly, processing, because it really is a raw nut. It's dehydrated, but in order to keep it so that it preserves all of its nutrient density, and also can uh, be used to make a nut butter that goes into the mixing bowl to make the yogurt. Um, there were quite a few uh, steps that we had to um, develop to bring it here. Yeah, can you kind of maybe uh, elaborate on how do you get a nut down to yogurt form? Well, uh, we make it into a butter. So just like a peanut butter, only no peanuts. Um, and it goes into a big mixing bowl, you know, uh, 10 times your size. Wow. <laughs> wow. And we add with lava, uh, the second most important ingredient is another unique ingredient green plantain, which we pick on the farm in Costa Rica and blanch to stop it from ripening. And when the more ripe a plantain, the higher the sugar content is. So we wanted the lowest possible sugar content. They call it the bricks. So we stop it from ripening. And those plantain, those whole that whole plant matter is combined in this mixing bowl. So you've got the peely nut butter, this creamy peely nut butter and uh, green plantain. And then we do add coconut, organic coconut cream and basically mix. And that becomes a slurry that uh, gets, a, uh, gets pasteurized briefly to get rid of all the bad bugs. And then we inoculate it with vegan cultures, our unique consortium of vegan probiotics. And they start feasting on the prebiotics that are naturally occurring in the plant matter itself. And that's why the probiotic counts were off the charts when we first um, come off the line, I mean, just off the charts, 200 billion. And I learned about, it is a living culture thing because it goes right from there to the grocery store shelf. So it's fresh, like a fresh fruit. Um, but it does live in that cup. These are wonderful um nurturing, restorative, uh, gut health buddies that are in that cup that are eating the prebiotics as nourishment and keeping them alive during the life of the product. So we measured on our very last day of uh, cultures 
and have an average of 50 billion. Wow. A kombucha generally has about two at bottling. And, you know, this is one of these subjects, you know, we think of yogurt as being healthy, but it really is almost 90% added sugar. And sugar is a like agent orange to the gut microbiome. It just, it's, it doesn't help. And um, that's sad that it's in the cultured set with all the other yogurt. But um, that's, that's the way the category is. And we're hoping to change that. Now, you mentioned that you had been working, you know, in Southeast Asia and working in Costa Rica. So you're working with a lot of international locations. What are some things that you've kind of learned throughout this process? Because you mentioned you were working for two years before Lava kind of actually uh, uh, got going. What did you learn that some entre- that you maybe was an aha moment that you didn't know about before? So that what are some things that some entrepreneurs can think about when they're thinking, thinking uh, internationally? like international trade. International trade. Um, well, uh, we're a very small planet. <laughs> I know I learned that. Um, I've had so many aha moments, but uh, it, has, it was a joyous ride. Uh, I had been uh, on a number of brands and had some successes along the way, but uh, nothing like the first two years at Lava. And I love to pioneer, you know, be the first. And, and it's it really is like the pioneers in, in the West and it's uncharted ter- territories. It's very inhospitable. They do not want you to trespass <laughs> and, you know, they will kill you if you trespass. <laughs> so, you know, the, the shelf space is pretty much owned and paid for. So uh, you've got to slip in through the, the cracks. Um, however, Many, many retailers, you know, they're all trying to read the tea leaves about what is next. What do people want? What uh, we don't need duplication. We already have the top high volume items. What is next? And what we learned from really the best marketing and data intel, consumer marketing intel, uh, was that authenticity is what consumers most want. Even those that may not know exactly how to read a label, you know, and know what it means for them personally, you know, how many, all the macros were so protein crazed as a, as a culture. And um, it's pretty easy to get protein uh really in you know our diets um and you know for me i didn't want a lot of protein uh it you know i'm thin boned with a family history of osteoporosis too much protein in my diet leaches calcium but i do see value in it um i just didn't want to add a bunch of powders and ultra processing agents to what was already naturally occurring in the plant. So that that really does seem to be, I mean, that was the aha moment when customers get, they see what you see and they tell you back what you've been struggling to put into words, you know, from a sales and marketing perspective, you're always trying to, you know, thread the needle and marketing experts say, if you can't articulate your message in 30 seconds or less, you don't know what you're selling. And I'm like, yeah, but when you have a great meal with people that love you and that, you know, just everything about it, it's more than just the food. You know, it really is a, um, Well, Danny Meyer put it beautifully, uh, the great hospitality expert, and he defined it as it's what's done for you 
not done to you. So it's a very emotional um, feeling where it's your intellect and your senses. That is what, that's what affects taste. Um, so it is in architecture, they call it the, the golden mean where you're capturing the perspective and the light and what's already there, you know? Uh, so I did fall in love early uh, with food science, even though I was terrible at math. Um, I loved, I, I had a, a great chemist that I think he invented the soft and chewy cookie dough or something, you know, it just, it wasn't a clean label, anything, but it took a lot of technology. <laughs> He was in the toy business, but he was an intriguing um, teacher, and I was captivated by the, the catalytic events of putting things together to make something new. So that that is very much what happens uh, with lava, and this is what great cooking is, great culinary, uh, great chefs do this every day. Um, so I am not a great chef, <laughs> <laughs> but I know something that resonates as authentic and makes me feel good. And that's what people tell us over and over and over again. They don't even like yogurt. And many of them don't buy plant-based because it's ultra processed. So this is something standalone. You know, one of the I don't things know if I answered the question. No, you I really a, want to answer it. <laughs> you did a great job. In fact, one of the things you mentioned that I think is very important to kind of highlight is is the shelf life and the competition of that shelf life, right? You know, getting your product on the shelf against the crafts and the 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 yogurts, right? The large um, corporations. How difficult is it, right? You're starting to start out. How difficult has it been for you and Lava? to get your product out there in front of your consumers and who would you define as your consumer? Oh, it's been incredibly difficult. And I know what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, at least I, I think I know what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> you know, but we're, we're only as good as the last 15 minutes, you yeah, know? I point. mean, the game is constantly changing. Um, we were We were devastated by COVID. And by, you know, trucks just not rolling, getting deprioritized for frozen chicken and frozen vegetables and oat milk and other high demand items. So small brands that um, were starting off just, you know, they suffered and, and we definitely suffered. But uh, one thing for sure is those brands I most admire and the products, the branded products that really stand out, very few of them were overnight successes. They did have many iterations and um, I'm hoping that we are going to be one of them and we're reinventing ourselves now. You know, it's a, the, one of their nine lives. I hope it's not nine. I hope it can be two, two <laughs> lives. <laughs> But it was such a rocket ship ride the first two years. And then five months after we launched in Whole Foods, we were, um, we did hit the, the lockdown, which affected shopping be behavior dramatically. And um, also just not enough man hours to load trucks and get the shelves filled. And all those workers were, definitely frontline and trying to feed the country, you know? Um, so we still, um, but then there's also the capital markets, you know, and it, it really is a game of money ball. You know, we are just starting over and um, there are so many retailers who are trying to bring culinary medicine to the grocery stores they really the i mean i do believe that food is the root cause of all disease 
So if you see what's on the shelf now and most retailers, it is ultra processed, high refined carbohydrates, you know, truck stationary, you know, 53 foot truckload of Oreos outside of a single store. I'm like, how many Oreos can you sell? But we can sell, we are selling more than ever. We're selling more Cheez-Its than ever. And it, and we are fatter and more sick than ever. So I can just say that uh, I went to an extraordinary conference, the first of its kind for me, called the American College of Lifestyle Medicine uh, last week. And Lava hosted a breakfast. Uh, so we served it on the breakfast bu buffet, but it is a... Uh, it is a group of uh, lifestyle medicine uh, physicians and healthcare practitioners, uh, many in private practice, that really support a plant-based diet and uh, lifestyle medicine to treat, prevent, and mitigate disease. Uh, these guys are not, you know, anti-pharma and it's not we're not you know i'm a very big supporter of uh good quality medicine and lucky to have had it but the healthcare system is broken <laughs> and it is the biggest scourge on climate and uh really you know our civilization so, and a disease-based medical model is flawed. And these brave opinion leaders are out there taking their time uh, away from their practices, learning about food medicine and even New York City hospitals. There are eight New York City, the biggest healthcare system in, in, in the country. There are approved now for, and these are underserved communities speaking hundreds of different languages, but suffering from comorbidities and high rate of uh, dying from these comorbidities, in, they are being treated with lifestyle medicine as a front line of defense. I mean, I don't know that that's ever happened before, and I was pretty excited to be a part of it. Yeah, now you're kind of speaking my language. You know, healthcare. You know, cultivary, uh, uh, cultivary medicine was very interesting word that you use. I was like, oh, that's very interesting because one thing we do. So I, outside of the podcast, a lot of people know that. Listen, is I, I work in healthcare, and so preventative cardiology. When you think of preventative cardiology, how do you prevent heart attacks? How do you prevent heart disease? You're thinking fish oils. You're thinking you know these non medicines. You're thinking actually food. If you actually having a fish actually eating a salmon on a, once a week is going to do so much more benefit than having a hundred fish oils a week, right? A hundred fish oil pills, right? Just the, the food that you consume. In fact, one of the things, uh, somebody I think you should actually reach out to Dr. Sergio Fazio. He's a certified lipidologist and endocrinologist. I'll send you some information after the show, but I used to work with Dr. Oh, that, Fazio. I would love that. So he's, he's we'll phenomenal. We'll send him the product. Yes, please, because he's great. Because what he primarily focuses, he's a he's a preventative cardiologist, right? So he's really focusing on how to prevent all these heart disease. And, and Tracy Stevenson, I'll actually connect you with her too. She's a dietitian. But the goal, really, what we're focusing on, and one thing I'm I'm really love to hear that other healthcare systems are doing this, is how do we engage the patient in the the kitchen, right? We we really engage them in their lifestyle in regards to exercising, we talk about exercise, we talk about, you know, medicines they should take, but now do we need to take it a step further and help them in the kitchen? So what OHSU had been doing in the past is we'd actually take the patients to a local grocery store and we'd actually have our own cardiologist cook meals for the patients in front of the patients that teach them how to cook these meals. They talk about why they're using these certain ingredients. And then after they were done doing that, 
they would give them coupons because, again, this was done at a local grocery store. So they'd give them coupons for the items they used during that cooking segment and say, hey, here are the items in the store right now. Here are coupons for you to purchase it if you want to cook this meal at home for your family as well. You know, and we we actually created a cookbook for this. And it's very important, you know, um, healthcare is important. Healthcare is, is in shambles right now. We have difficulty because our, our, our system is, is, is really broken. We don't have enough staff to come out. We're not having enough babies to have enough staff, right? Uh, when you're thinking about the baby boomers are aging, they're going to be the next kind of generation that needs help and support. Well, millennials are just as big as the baby boomers, but after that, Gen X generation is much smaller, right? And these are the people that are going to be taking care of us tomorrow. And so healthcare, you know, the medicine or the, the food piece in, in healthcare is very, very interesting uh, because it, it just, it has a lot of pieces to it, right? It's going to help us healthcare. It's going to help our environment. It's going to help us financially, right? The, the economics behind good food, there's a lot to it. Now, one of the things you also mentioned is you've been doing a lot of these businesses kind of within the health and the food industry kind of uh, pretty, pretty uh, dominantly. Why is it so important you feel that we should, because you kind of you kind of alluded to it, but I really want you to have an opportunity to highlight it. Why is it so important for you to be focusing on these type of food ingredients that are really good for the environment and good for the nature and good for our bodies? Well, um, I mean, this is where you mentioned millennials. Um, I mean, they're in some ways they're a very thrifty demographic, but they are also will go to great lengths to have their dollars go to where they care. Uh, and so they are mission-based investors, if you will. So, um, you know, we certainly resonate with that demographic because the peeling nut is not a, is a regenerative crop. The name lava came from the soil in which the peeling nut grows, which is volcanic soil. So it's this very nutrient rich, and I mentioned protein before, because there is more to nutrition than protein. You know, <laughs> we're just so, and that is, we inherited this from the meat industry. I'm, you know, and I hate to say it, but, um, you know, it, it, it's not just we do, we, we're over proteinized and I'm not going to win that battle. I can't, you know, I'm not even going to take that on. I'm just trying to hit the, um, the, the bliss point, which is food that is made from whole food that hasn't been messed with and is exactly as close to its origin as possible combined to make something that actually is convenient and tastes great. People buy us because they love the taste. So it kind of goes back to that hospitality thing, you know, everybody's tastes are different. Yeah. And if a celebrity tells you that something tastes good, it actually affects how you experience something. You know, we are such uh, brain, uh, you know, uh, easily influenced uh, creatures, you know, but when it comes to behavior like cooking, um, you know, I, I just think like with bottled water, I mean, people can't, they can't fill a bottle with water. No, actually <laughs> they can't. <laughs> So, uh, and I work with the guys that founded Smart Water, you know, and it's a very, very big, wonderful business. So I'm hoping that the yogurt industry, which really, uh, I'm sure there's there's plenty of items out there that are uh, better than others, but for the most part, it has it's a devalued category that has been cheapened um, and has a health halo of gut health, of being cultured, but has all this added sugar. So um, 
because sugar and water are every processor's favorite two ingredients. And why is that? Well, let's see. Costs. So, you know, it's not, it's the entire food industry is built on a foundation of have it cost as little as possible and sell it for as much as possible. So, uh, I mean, there certainly are exceptions, but we think that, you know, health and wellness is worth the price. So we're going to take that, we'll take that to the market and see what the market has to say. Uh, we, we are just ready to um, do a price adjustment on lava. And we were trying to compete, you know, the race to the bottom, they call it, right. in, yeah. in yogurt. Um, so we are, uh, will be interesting. Yeah. Where, where What's do your you, health? What? Yeah, mm -hmm. I was going to say, where do you see lava kind of in the next five or 10 years? I do think it's a standalone uh, product that is, uh, I know a lot of uh, nutrition coaches, this is lifestyle coaches, this is, you know, part of their prescription. Um, there are more and more home delivery systems for fresh food that are coming through gastroenterologists or for, and, and also for kids, you know, there's a lot of, uh, Explo just incredible breakthrough work around the human micro microbiome and the brain gut connection and the whole area of gut health um, is going to become more and more uh, talked about. But um, I mean, a lot of athletes are pretty sophisticated about the difference it makes there to have a biodiverse diet. That means lots of diversity, not just pea protein and sunflower oil with an extra helping of uh, maltodextrone and refined wheat flour. <laughs> you know, I mean, these are the ingredients that make up most of the center store of the grocery industry. They sit in a warehouse upwards of a year, and that's what's filled the pipeline during the past two and a half years. You know, many of these items were fading away and becoming irrelevant before the pandemic, and they are now just rolling in it, you know, soups and things that, um, I call them the bottles and cans, you know, yeah. But fresh food took a hit, just like restaurants and great, you know, beautiful uh, restaurant businesses just gone. They'll be back. Yeah, they're all coming up. They're, you know, you can't keep it down. My grandfather, who I guess was my mentor, he died at ninety-one bench pressing. Wow. Um, just as an example of way to go. Uh, <laughs> um, but he, uh, and he was a writer, um, and, uh, he told me that, and this, I do think is a sign of an entrepreneur is, uh, I never knew I was an entrepreneur, but I, I actually think I am is, um, to crawl out of a drain pipe wearing a tuxedo. So that, that was, uh, that was my grandpa Howard's like, you know, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Now, what would you say? Cause you've been doing this for some time. You know, you mentioned that you've helped scale other businesses, including pirate booty. What kind of things have you learned in the past that you feel were important to make lava successful today? Well, uh, it takes, um, it takes great operations. So um, you can have an exquisite brand positioning and marketing, but you really do need to be able to make it the same every time. And that consistency, which when you're dealing with a living product and which responds to changes in the seasons and changes in the, you know, the plant temperature and there, um, you know, it, it, uh, 
you need somebody who um, you need you need talent on the operation side uh, that and it you have to have a stomach you have to have the right people they've got to really have a stomach for it which is long thankless hours watching the paint dry um, <laughs> you know until it's until it's right and you understand why it's right mm -hmm. and then do it again and then do it again then do it again um and i'm it takes it takes time to make a scalable commercial business and um even the big brands that uh, i admire and that are out there they still struggle with consistency you know there's a shift change and you know somebody had a baby and they forgot to train them on that, you know, whatever it is that this tiny, it's just like medicine in a way. It's, these are delicately calibrated pieces of equipment that you need to make it, um, you know, safe and uh, hold, hold shelf life and be what you promise it to be. And uh, that's the rules of the game. Yeah. No. So, Talent, be surrounded by talent. And if they can share your vision, all the better. It's very hard to do. Yeah, I bet. Now for the folks at home, if they're interested in finding Lava, where are you at in the stores? Are you currently in stores? Are you online? Where can they find your product? Well, uh, we have lost quite a bit of distribution over the past uh, six months, but happy to say we are in the top 120 whole food stores. Very proud partner there. Um, we are available primarily in the Northeast and in the uh, in California. So uh, we are moving back into the Pac Northwest. Have a lot of demand in the Portland. Uh, oh yeah, we're we're Ashland big on co-op. We're coming. We're coming. Let's back. bring it back because um, I, I have a Trader Joe's around the street. I'm ready to go walk and grab. Yeah, some. we're probably not going to be at Trader Joe's, <laughs> but I would love it. You can you can give them my number. I will. I'll talk um, to them. Don't worry. I got you. <laughs> you know they built their own brand, so. Yep. They're not really part, uh, you know, they have a different business model, but nobody does logistics better than in Trader Joe's. So, you know, I mean, I would love, I'd love to be uh, able to uh, bring lava there, but someday. White label. Get over there. <laughs> I mean, our real, um, our goal is to be able to, um, get it to people who are very specific about their diet as an adjunct to feel, feeling good. They know how to feel good. Either they didn't feel good and now they do and they want to keep it that way. And if you've ever been sick and gotten better, you know that there's nothing better, you know, than feeling great all the time. Um, so like so those kind of medical referrals that will definitely you know building that tribe um of uh thoughtful practitioners and caregivers dietitians functional medicine pas i mean there are thousands and thousands and thousands of them yeah. that have gotten off the grid to approach wellness very differently and it is food-based health care. I agree. I, I completely agree. I, I, I see that transition happening kind of daily uh, in the healthcare world where we're, we're focusing more on, you know, prevention, right? We, we want to get beyond treatment. We, won't, we don't want to treat people anymore. We want to prevent, right? We want to start preventing things. Now, Elizabeth, I thank you first and foremost so much. Now, if folks at home are interested in learning more about LAVA, do, is there a website that they can uh, visit? Yes, it is hello at love lava. And remember, it's two V's in each. So we've got four V's. Four V's. V for vegan, V for victory. I like it. <laughs> so L A V V A. Uh, it's L O V V A. L A V V A. So love has two V's and lava 
Perfect. SUVs. So hello, Lava. You can get, uh, I will, I see those emails. So I'd love to hear from anybody. Um, and, uh, you know, put your money where your mouth is. You got to support uh, brands that are doing the hard work, businesses that are doing the hard work and doing things a little differently and doing things better. Yep. yep. And I agree. I think the millennial generation and, and Gen X, and I think they're focused on companies that really do align with their own core values. And and so I, I think that's that's a big, big plus. Elizabeth, thank you so very much uh, for joining me on the show. And those for, for those listening, again, this information, Lava information, will be on the newsletter the week before it airs, the week it airs, and the week after it airs. You can also find Lava information on the website at the day this episode airs. So if, you, if you're if you unfamiliar with the actual, if you cannot remember the actual two Vs, uh, go ahead and check out the newsletter, check out the website, theshadesofe.com. We'll have all this information. You can also follow me on all the social channels channels at the shades of e.com. Elizabeth, any last words for those listening at home? It's just nobody's got an edge on you, babe. Just keep it, keep it going. I love it. I love it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, don't <laughs> forget to subscribe to the newsletter and don't forget to follow me on the social at the shades of E. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.